Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Mark Steiner. Great to have you with us. The race for governor in Ohio is making headlines across the country. Some see it as a test between Mike DeWine, who represents right-wing Trump Republicans, and Richard Cordray, who represent, represents the centrist Obama Democrats. They faced each other before when DeWine defeated Cordray for attorney general. And Cordray then went off to work for the Obama administration. But as usual, the media has ignored the other parts of the campaign. They focus on the major parties and do not significantly look at the Green Party. Their party candidate is Constance Cadell Newton, who's running for governor. She was denied the right to be part of the debate they held the other night and will probably be not be part of the subsequent debates taking place. But where does she stand on the issues? Why is she running? And where would she take Ohio? What place do or can third parties play in our political landscape and in Ohio specifically for this conversation? So we're about to talk to Constance Cadell Newton, the Green Party candidate for governor of Ohio, and Constance, welcome. Good to have you with us. Thank you. So let's talk about this race. And, and, and uh, the other night there was this debate that took place between uh, the Democrat and the Republican running for governor of Ohio. You were frozen out of that debate. Just, just tell us a bit about what led up to that and what you did to try to get in the debate and what the consequences were. Uh, thank you. Yes, um, we've been... we've been very proactive with how we've been dealing with the media. So I have taken a lot of opportunities to um, interview and to go to candidates forums. And um, traditionally, third, minor parties uh, and candidates are left out of the debate. So it wasn't a big surprise when we found out about the debate schedule that did not include uh, myself and also the libertarian candidate uh, in Ohio. So uh, we contacted the organizations, the Ohio Debate Commission. I had people contacting the League of Women Voters, who was one of the co-sponsors. And um, basically, um, when I heard that the Ohio Debate Commission was forming to, uh, you know, have more fair debates and uh, a better debate process. Uh, I was happy to hear about that, and I really hoped that they would include me. So you can imagine I was very disappointed when I found out that we wouldn't be included, despite the fact that, that this newly formed uh, debate commission um, had come together with a bunch of organizations uh, saying that they wanted to promote a democratic process. So we did contact them. We've been in touch with them. Um, they declined to allow me to debate with uh, Cordray and DeWine uh, for um, basically there are three debates in Ohio uh, that have been scheduled. Um, we were at the University of Dayton debate yesterday. Um, there will be one in Marietta and one in Cleveland. Um, so the Ohio Debate Commission says that they are only really in charge of one of those debates. So we did contact the University of Dayton as well and asked to be included. So um, they, they've all declined, unfortunately. Well, and why so they we decline? Were... What, what is it? That, I mean, what's the thresh? Are they giving you like a threshold because of the, yeah. what the polls are saying? What excuse are they using to, to not allow you yes. to be in the debates? Right. What excuse this year? It, it seems like it's always kind of a moving target. So this year they have set the threshold at 10% uh, in the polls. Mm -hmm. Most polls don't even include a Green Party candidate. So it's very difficult to get an accurate poll. I don't believe that the polls are very reliable. Um, so they set it at 10%. Um, the debate commission also put on their website that it was based on likelihood of winning. But as as most people would uh, understand, that really biases the viewers and the voters. It, it's really an unfair um, criterion, especially if they're posting it on there uh, publicly that uh, we're not likely to win. So, so I believe that based on the issues that we could win if we got enough publicity and were allowed in the debates. So let's get to the heart of some of the matters that, that you would have talked about last night and are talking about in your campaign. The, the debate, from what I saw, uh, focused on things like the opioid issue, which is emotionally grabbing, for good reason, people in Ohio. Um, there's a lot of sniping back and forth between two, the two men kind of personally attacking one another. So I'm curious what you think was left out. What, what do you see uh, that are the key issues uh, that are not being discussed or that you would have discussed differently than they? Um, well, I, one thing that I noticed is that they talked about Medicaid expansion, and that really seemed to be the focus uh, of their discussion on health care. 
Green Party candidates um, and a lot of activists around the state have been promoting universal health care, single payer health care. There's also a bill pending for Medicare for all, which is different than the Medicaid expansion. Uh, we really believe that health care is a human right and that no matter what's going on nationally with health care, we have the ability to provide health care in Ohio for Ohioans at the state level. How, would, so how, how could that happen? One big Talk a bit about how you think that could happen. Um, so there is a bill pending right now in the state house. Um, it's Medicare for all, and um, we also follow the SPAN model, the Single Payer Action Network. So um, basically, um, it does uh, provide a, a single payer system so that health expenses are basically uh, covered. Uh, it doesn't matter what your income level is. It's it's really for everybody. It would cut out a lot of the administrative costs. It would cut out the middleman, and it would save Ohioans a lot of money. So, I, as I said earlier, they talked a lot about the opioid crisis. I'm curious what you think is being left out of this debate. I mean, what do you, what do you and the Green Party bring to this that's different than uh, Cordes Democrats or Dewine's Republicans? Mm -hmm. We're really interested. Um, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, so um, right now in Ohio, there's um, itch, issue one, and issue one uh, brings down a lot of the drug offenses to a misdemeanor. So, um, you know, DeWine is coming from the tough on crime perspective, um, and I think really put out a lot of misinformation about issue one. Um, I do support issue one, uh, as Cordray has also said that he does as well. Um, but basically, I view the opiate crisis as a health care issue, not a criminal issue. And so we would address this by um, promoting expansive mental health and addiction services through a universal health care system and treating addiction as a health care issue, not a criminal issue. So that's something that I don't feel was really adequately addressed by either of the other two candidates. So in these races, is, is, I think it's a question that looms here in a lot of people's minds because this is a kind of a very strange and different era with Trump sitting in the White House. And you're seeing a lot of people who one might think would be a green or independent candidate and are running inside the Democratic Party. And many of them running openly as socialists or democratic socialists in, in, the, in the Democratic Party. Not that Cordray is doing that. Cordray is clear about who he is as a centrist Democrat. But, but, but there are many, Democrats, many people running inside the Democratic Party right now. So, I mean, how, when people say, so why, I respond to that, to that and how, where you mm -hmm. see this going, especially in Ohio. And mm -hmm. Sounds like maybe you're asking the question, why run as a Green? Um, instead of a Democrat. Well, that and just, yes, that and just that the, the whole, the, some people are saying the dynamic, the political dynamic is shifting, where people on the progressives and people on the left and people who would be Greens are now running inside the Democratic Party to shift that party and almost either take it over or split it. You know what I'm saying? So there's, there's, some, there's, a, there's something almost that, that people are trying to find that's happening at the moment politically. How do you think you mm -hmm. and the Greens fit into that? Well, um, as a Green, I feel like I have um, additional freedom to stick by our principles and uh, our integrity. Uh, we don't accept corporate donations, so that's one of the biggest uh, differences between Greens and Democrats. You know that Greens are not going to be taking corporate donations. Um, I know there may be some Democrats who also choose not to do that, but by and large, um, I know that both of my opponents in this race do take money from the oil and gas industry and corporations. Um, I would just say that we are really trying to build a, a new party that actually represents the people and, um, you know, that's not, um, that's not compromised by corporate interests and the, the corporate donations. So um, I think that it's great that leftists and socialists are running, and I would absolutely invite them to run as Greens. Um, we're working on a lot of coalition building right now. So I would just encourage them, you know, as you see the Democrats going further and further to the middle and being centrist and trying to go after those kind of centrist votes, um, we are trying to build a party on the left that will actually represent the people and stand up for our progressive values. 
So, and so again, just in, in, in keeping with that last question before we hit another piece about your specific platforms, uh, some people might say, look, you have DeWine running and he is, uh, the, the Trump likes him, he likes Trump, Trump, uh, you know, that, that, that he's part of that vast network of right-wing Republicans. And if you, as you're polling, two to three percent at the moment, it could be more, because polls are never, are never always right. But if it's in a tight race, if you were that margin that put DeWine in and kept Cordry out, how do you respond to people when they, when they say that as a critique? Right. A couple of things. Um, first of all, there's also a libertarian who is in the race, and traditionally they um, mm -hmm. cater more to people on the right. Um, but, but aside from that, only about 30 to 40 percent of people actually vote who are eligible to vote. So we're really going after the unaffiliated voters, the first time voters. And um, what we've seen in the Green Party is that we're getting people coming from the left and the right and unaffiliated voters all across the spectrum who are interested in what the Green Party has to offer. People are really I think pretty fed up with the political system and how polarized it is now. And we're trying to be a party for the people that responds to everyday people's uh, interests and um, that really represents the people. And we're trying to represent all Ohioans. Um, I know that there is a lot of political polarization, but we're trying to find that common ground so that we can move forward in cooperation and find consensus on certain issues. So now, if you were to, if you were to ask the question uh, in a debate in a larger format, uh, to close out and tell the voters what exactly it is that the Greens are, are standing for and that you're standing for as the gubernatorial candidate that's different than the other two, beyond what we've already talked about, what would it be? I mean, what, what, how, would you, how would you describe how you, what your platform is saying to the people of Ohio about where you would take Ohio and why it's important for the Greens to win? Um, well, just in a nutshell, we are the only party and I'm the only candidate who is advocating for uh, an immediate moratorium and ban on fracking and injection wells in Ohio. We want to make sure that Ohioans have clean water and a, a clean, safe environment. And we also support the movement for community rights so that communities can protect uh, their local area from out-of-state polluters. But we're not just a one-issue party. We also stand for social justice and nonviolence. And we are standing for universal health care, which is something that the other two parties are not calling for, decriminalization and legalization of uh, recreational marijuana, uh, medical cannabis, and industrial hemp. And we also want a rapid transition to green energy in Ohio. Uh, we uh, really want to see a rise in green businesses, green manufacturing, and worker-owned manufacturing in Ohio. Um, we'd uh, like to transition quickly to clean energy sources and provide a super fund for workers who are coming out of dirty energy industries. Uh, one thing that I often uh, need to address is um, that, con that what seems like a conflict between environmental interests and workers. What I would say is that the Green Party um, stands strong with workers. We want to support workers and um, the, the, con the seemingly, seeming conflict between workers and the environment, I think, is a false conflict. We can support both through a program of green jobs, um, union jobs that will help protect our environment. Um, there's so much more. No, no, that was great. I mean, I think what you've just done is kind of give you a closing statement yeah. you would have given last night. I had a chance to be in the debate the other night. Yeah. So uh, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. We look forward to Thank you. following this campaign. Constance Cadell Newton is the Green Party candidate for governor of Ohio. Thanks so much for joining us here on The Real News. It's been a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you very much. Take care. And I'm Mark Steiner here for The Real News Network. Take care. We'll be talking together soon. Mm -hmm.